get to the point where it's like, pour it into the animal bucket, and then they're like, well, now we have to say, stick it up your ass. How do we say that fancy? It says, and then once rectal insertion is accomplished, and I'm like, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, you want to use the passive voice for that. I think that was smart. <laughs> Okay, Patreon goal for the PJ party is locked. <laughs> yeah. I will. Ha I, there's a number for me, and it's yes. it's not that high. Yep. It's yeah. not that high of a number. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or we would need to come up with a whole new intro. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Got my coffee. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. We'll find out where that coffee is in just a minute. We're going to have fun. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, Eli's going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting one ocean to my right is guest masochist extraordinaire Michael Marshall Marsh. How are you this fine evening, sir? I am great. I uh, just drank a glass of carrot juice, so I'm apparently immortal. Nothing oh, yeah. can harm me Excellent. in any way. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. That and Heath's coffee together. Did you drink it? Um, did you drink it mouth or something else? <laughs> How'd you do it? <laughs> yeah, spoilers. Uh, what will we be breaking down today? We watched the Gerson Miracle. It's the story of ass coffee. And that's yep. what I've been talking about this whole time. L listen, <laughs> yep. if you say your thing has coffee enemas, ass coffee in it, that's all I'm talking about forever now. Sure. You can like try to say other stuff, but that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's ass coffee. Yeah. There could be a list of 50 things. And if one of them is ass coffee, you just do ass coffee. It's ass coffee is the thing that's that yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And oh, by, by the way, watched multiple movies about ass coffee Weird one for the eulogy, but right there it is. Could go on the tombstone now. <laughs> and Marsh, how bad was this movie? Well, if you hate cancer, but you can't tell the difference between a pharmacy and the produce section of Whole Foods, you <laughs> will love this movie. I like that we've done multiple movies because now somebody's going to be like, okay, but did you like really study ass coffee? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Multiple, I have sources. multiple sources. I'm a skeptic. Yes. <laughs> So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst segue. And they had to do this because they talked about ass coffee and then did more movie. So you have mm -hmm. to be at that point doing something like, speaking of ass coffee, the Gerson family did all this <laughs> stuff too. We're going to do right. like an hour on that. Fuck you. No, this is about ass coffee now. Speaking of blowing smoke up your ass, here's the fucking lady that invented this. Yeah. So I was going to go with best worst scene transitions. Poor Marsh. Okay. So every, so the first person that watches the movies, usually it's Eli, will go through and mark little transitions of like, hey, here's the line or the moment or something observable where the scene switches from, you know, one scene to the next. But this movie never does that. This movie is like stream of consciousness from start to fucking finish. And Marsh is in there like apologizing in the notes. He's like, look, I know that I've put a scene change here mid sentence, but it'll make sense when you. When you watch the movie, well, as much as anything will make sense when you watch this movie, this will make sense. And yes, it did. It was better than Eli would have done with the well, movie. Well, yeah, I noticed that the, <laughs> the transitions were like temporally coherent. So something was different than normal. <laughs> Good job, Marsh. Well, that's right. the thing. It sort of felt like they were rushing in like from one scene to the next. Like they were trying to rush that so fast that you couldn't like throw a rebuttal in. Like, they, yes. like you were arguing <laughs> with them. And they just, if I don't stop <laughs> speaking in one long sentence, you can't tell me I'm full of shit. Yeah. The movie was trying to gish gallop us. That's, a, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I've got to go with best worst legitimate evil. And you know, <sighs> this isn't funny, but there is a story in this documentary that ends with the narrator saying what I think is the most evil sentence ever uttered on a god awful movie. And you know, we'll come to it, but it is a chilling sentence that fuck everyone involved in it. So much competition for that award. And yeah, I think they might have done Yeah, it. but this is the worst, I think. Yeah, no, I think it, it might just take it. So, all right, well, in this movie, people are going to be shoving shit up their ass and pulling stuff out of it. So we're going to need a second to put on our gloves, but we'll be back in a minute with all the deadly misinformation that is the Gerson Miracle. Okay, so this shelf is for cornflake topped? No, that's Cheetos topped. Read the signs. Well, right neater. Hey, guys, what's, what's with the uh, shelves? 
Oh, these, yeah. We're getting ready for our God Awful Movies live show in Salt Lake City, Utah on August 3rd. Wait, we have a God Awful Movies live show in Salt Lake City, Utah on August 3rd? We sure do, and we gotta be prepared to take people's payments. Well, I thought everybody would just buy tickets on Eventbrite like normal. (laughs) No, you ignorant rube. This is Mormon country we're talking about. The currency there is funeral potatoes. Yeah, it's true. We're gonna have to organize, resell, re-rack. Okay, okay, guys, I don't think that's the case. I I think people can get their tickets at godawfulmovieslive.com or by checking the link in the show notes and just pay with with money. Okay, well, either way, I'm sure they got plenty of time to figure it out. Actually, Heath, they don't. The theater we booked is only 150 seats, and almost a third of those are already gone. Damn, people better get baking. Or check out the website, God Awful Movies, live on August 3rd. Get your tickets at godawfulmovieslive.com or, you know, do the potato thing. Funeral potatoes thing, yep. Sure. Can't even have any. Sure you can. You'll just die. Right. And we're back for the breakdown. And let me tell you, this movie is not fucking around. The very first thing we see is a title card that says, the cure for cancer has been discovered. (laughs) Yeah, that is the (laughs) boldest opening frame of any movie I have ever seen completely. Yeah, Yeah. this is like a bad public speaker being like, boobs, now that I got your attention. Yeah, (laughs) right. Don't lie about (laughs) stuff for 90 minutes. I also love that the version that Eli found for us had Cyrillic subtitles throughout, which was interesting. Yeah, so it says the cure for cancer has been discovered. And then we get another title card that says like dot, dot, dot. In 1928. And I hate the fact that these title cards, they're lit by candles. But every time like the lights come down and come up, the candles have moved between every title card. But what's weird is the lights come down on lit candles. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you bring the lights down on lit candles. Like they go dark <laughs> on the lit candles. Like yep. This movie doesn't understand candles. We're like 20 seconds in, it cannot <laughs> understand candles already. Yeah, so we get this long series of candle lit title cards that tell us about... Dr. Max Gerson, right? And it points out early on that he's Jewish. So chemotherapy is anti-Semitic. If you think about it, we already had a perfect. Yeah, this was like the opposite of Kanye. It was like, (laughs) he was a doctor. Not going to say what religion. He was a Jewish doctor. A Jewish (laughs) doctor. (laughs) We disagree with Nazis sort of in this movie. Yeah, it's like he was a German Jew doctor. And it's like, it's you're dropping Jew in there. Like it's a mum telling her son how well a kid from the neighborhood has done. You're like, oh, he's right. a doctor and he's a Jew. And look how good he's doing. So, you know, you could be doing better for yourself. Yeah. So- it also says that he found the cure for every chronic disease, not just cancer. Yep. Every chronic disease. So fuck those diseases that don't stay forever. He was only focused on the chronic ones. Yeah, temporary diseases. Yeah. Like, you know, no, he doesn't have time for that shit. But- at this moment, I was like, okay. I mean, to be fair, death by ass coffee will cure every disease, right. sort of. <laughs> that is it's true. a weird way of putting it, though. Yeah. And they do they do explain, they, you know, they talk about the fact he was in Germany. It said the Nazis went for his family, and they said he killed seven of his eight siblings in the Holocaust. But that makes it sort of sound like the Nazis did the Holocaust to try and stop him, but they somehow failed. Like, like he right, was the reason yeah. they yeah, were doing seven that. Seven eighths of the way through. Yeah, yeah. this is an right. elaborate Illuminati plot. Yeah. <laughs> they also explained that a Nobel laureate thought he was really smart. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. Gerson was praised by Dr. Albert Schweitzer. Maybe you've heard of him. Nobel laureate. And like, okay, he got a peace prize. Fucking relax. Yeah, right. Yeah, not a doctory one. Kissinger got a peace prize. Come on. Right, right. But then we finally get around to our title. I love, too, that the last title card we see, it says, narrated by Dr. A.F. Al Oeming, which looks like a lazy attempt at an anagram. Right? I had to check (laughs) to see if you could make a word out of that. You can't. Did you get anything? I I got nothing. No. uh -uh. Ah. I was sort of reading it out because it sounded like it was a pun name that failed. Right, right. Like a no illusions. Yes. You know, like it was like a pun, like the answer to a joke, but didn't, right. you know, no matter what <laughs> accent you read it out and it doesn't work. Right. So, okay. But then uh, uh, right as I'm writing in my notes, is this movie going to be all title cards? It's not. We, we open proper on traffic and gas pumps and this narrator kicks in to explain that a hundred years ago, people didn't have all these traffics and gas pumps. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> but also he says, you know, a hundred years ago, the scenes before your eyes would have been incomprehensible. It's like the camera work is so shaky, mate. They're currently incomprehensible. Yeah, right. Like if, you, yes. if you hold still, the camera Ooh. was giving, the camera work was giving me, like it was making me seasick. And I was thinking, can Gerson therapy cure seasickness? Is that what you're trying to do? Oh, Is that right, make us yeah. sick and then we cure <laughs> ourselves? <laughs> It's not chronic, though. So, yeah. That's true. <laughs> he says, quote, what has become daily normal life is no longer synchronized with the blood that flows through our veins. That's like right at the opening, almost the opening line of the film. Right. He then explains that toxins will kill you either quickly or slowly. <laughs> <laughs> you might think it's old age if it's slow, but that's how they get you. It's toxins. Yeah, it's not, right? it's not it's, old yeah, age ever. Apparently okay. aging is a hoax. That's yes. also the opening bit. But is that what they think? Do they think Gerson therapy has cured old age? Because, spoiler alert, Max Gerson is dead. So did yep. he just opt out of it? I don't know. Of old age, yes. <laughs> he chose, yeah. Yeah, fair. He started doing decaf ass coffee and then, then you die. <laughs> right. Well, and, and we should point out, too, that they really slow roll exactly what Gerson therapy is in this movie, right? Because it's so fucking stupid that they need you nodding along first. So what we're going to start with is toxins are bad. And man, that oil spill in the Prince William Sound, that sucked, right? Yeah. Every movie like this, they do this. They're, they're just going to name things that are obviously true to lull you to sleep. And then they're going to do their movie. But like... I'm not paying attention to any of this. I'm waking up when you say, put coffee in your butt now, and then I'm paying attention. <laughs> right, yes. But though he explains how all of the toxins in the environment, they go from the zooplankton to the polar bear seals and whales, and then to humans. And I'm like, yeah, we do eat a lot of polar bear seals and whales. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he made it sound like that was the direct food chain. Yes. If you see the, the footage that they're showing, it's like your zooplankton's into ducks, into polar bears, into Inuit people, <laughs> then to the rest of the world, I guess. I think that's the food chain they were sort of doing. Yes, we all eat Inuit people. Yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely. <laughs> Just me at my computer with the core of a polar bear and a fork, I look up. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, damn it. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'll cook it. We're also, we're also a bunch of fucking tree murderers. He explains how it used to be that a squirrel could jump from one tree to another all the way across America. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, life was better back in your imagination, dudes. Yeah, the fact that squirrels can't play floor is lava across an entire yeah, yes. continent is evidence that everything is fucked. Why is that the metric? Yeah, I don't know. And they actually say, we only have so many trees. Those aren't renewable. And I was like, aren't they? No. <laughs> like, the trees don't grow on trees. Shit. Okay. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Hold on. Shit. So yeah, but he's, he explains, he's like, yeah, humans wouldn't be such a problem if they didn't consume stuff. And I'm like, no, that is correct. You're, you're right. How about you stop consuming stuff first? Yeah, right. And then, but then he points out, you know, toxin, toxin, toxin. And then he notices that there's a, been a big rise in how many people die of cancer now. Right. And it, this is where he says that cancer cells are parasitic and immortal. It's like, nope, they can't be both of those things. <laughs> no, like, it's even, it's like leave them on a lab bench and they'll just die. So they aren't immortal. <laughs> also, you said that he cured cancer in the cold open of the movie. Yeah, so kind of contradicts that. <laughs> like, what are they said? Like, I was like, okay, does Gerson therapy set up like a cancer sanctuary inside the body? <laughs> And it, <laughs> the answer can live forever in peace. <laughs> what? Also, as he's listing all this stuff about cancer, we're just watching like three old women eating or something. And it feels really harsh if these women don't have cancer. And then I thought, hang on, is he diagnosing their cancer? Is this their diagnosis? We're going to like break it to these old ladies <laughs> live that they've oh, got cancer. <laughs> hey, by the way, that's uh, you. I'm talking about you. Yeah. So, but then we finally get around to introducing Max Gerson. We start off with the biographical shit of like, you know, he grew up in the 1800s in Germany. He loved to play outside. And we're like, yeah, that's just generic kid shit. Get on with it. Right. Yeah. It's that he loved trees. He loved squirrels. Presumably those are squirrels who were homeward bounding their way across Germany yeah, exactly. at the time. So everything was fine. <laughs> the whole continents back in his day. Yeah. And they show a bunch of squirrels. Like for, this is like two minutes of squirrels. And the narrator doesn't want to interrupt the squirrels when they have like a close up. So there's long shots of just like a squirrel doing squirrel stuff and he stops mid sentence to just yeah, squirrel. look at it. Yeah. Do you think the narrator thought like the squirrel could hear him? It's like, oh God, I better stop speaking <laughs> otherwise I'll run away. I don't want to chase him off. 
or ruin the shot. Or was the squirrel like, hey, shut the fuck. Who is that? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're, so we're talking about Max Gerson playing outside as a kid. And they're like, he loved to watch fertilizer with great interest. And we're like, fucking what? What? And he's like, and he noticed that when they put the fertilizer down, the earthworms would would turn away from the from the crops. Doesn't he go even further? Doesn't he say about pesticides? Yeah, I think well, he, said right. he puts pesticides down, and that kept pests away. And this man is the genius who invented uh, the ghost therapy. He's like, wow, he was such a smart kid. He knew pesticides would kill pests. Brilliant. Yeah, excellent. Right, but they're presenting that as though that's a problem. Like, wow, this 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 crop isn't even good enough for worms and bugs and we're going to eat it, right? <laughs> but they're going to advocate for farmers that use like hot sauce for that. And yeah, the bugs would go away from hot sauce too. That, right. This is nothing. Yeah, exactly. So we get a bunch of time-lapse shots of plants growing. We see some chloroplasts. Because, you know, if, if, if you use microscopic imagery, your movie must be science. And then we learned that when Max Gerson was a kid, he had really bad migraines. But don't worry, he eliminated his migraines by eating nothing but raw vegetables. And the thing is, if he was getting migraines because he had a specific migraine trigger in his diet, changing your diet, you might have by accident eliminated that trigger and started to get fewer migraines. Yep. So like that is not that out there. But from there to say, and therefore I can cure tuberculosis and cancer and everything else is the step that you need to stop and think before you do that bit. Right. Like I used to get really bad migraines and I don't anymore. Right. Like that just sometimes that just happens. Yeah. Name all the things you've done since. It's, you <laughs> right. can pick whichever one you want. That's the And cure sell for it those. to people. Yeah. Like, that could have just been the Max, in a better world, that's the Max Gerson story. I used to get migraines and I don't anymore. Yep. <laughs> and I haven't killed thousands of people. Right. The end. Yeah. This is a better world. And squirrels are still circumnavigating the world. <laughs> So yeah, but people started using his Gerson diet and it turned out that it also cured all the other diseases. Who'd have thunk, right? And he does, a, he does a trial on TB and he says he's doing it on like 450 patients and he tried to prove it to a doctor that it's true. And the doctor says to him, if you can show me that even one out of 450 patients improved, I'd believe Gerson treatment's real. It's like, no, don't, because statistically, that's like a quarter of percent of patients. Right. That's a really terrible like metric to use for this trial. Not how it works. But, you know, everybody, let us know what we cured with this podcast just now, because I'm pretty <laughs> sure yeah. one of you yeah. is going to find the cure that we found to something. Stopped having migraines. Yeah, so, but of the 450 patients... 446 of them recovered Marsh. That is true. Fucking skeptic. That is true. And so they published that trial on a bunch of Gerson therapy websites 100 years later and nowhere oh, else. They don't exist anywhere <laughs> else that I could find. Huh. <laughs> huh. So yeah, so but but meanwhile in in terms of his personal life, Gerson had three haunted dolls. Oh, sorry, those are his daughters, right? They show this picture on. I was just like, "Wow, that's the scariest shit I'm, I'm going to see in this movie." And this movie's about killing people with ass coffee. And that's the thing, so far, this has just felt like an episode of Evil Citation Needed, essentially. Right. And, and I think Evil Citation Needed, <laughs> incidentally, even more of Eli's sketches in that end with someone dying. That's essentially oh, really? the only difference, <laughs> just more death in the sketches. Gerson needs a button to end his, the sketch of his life. That'd be great. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Gerson fled Nazi persecution in Germany and settled in New York City. And then, of course, the American medical community was stunned by his amazing ass coffee diet, right? But at the same time that he was stunning the medical community, he also, quote, invoked the dark forces within the medical establishment. Yeah, he ruined all their profits. No, he didn't. But yeah, the claim is he testified for the U.S. Senate in 1946 about how he definitely cured cancer and they were all psyched about it. And then some guy on like ABC radio announced that like, we have the cure for cancer. That's done now. And then the movie was like, well... That that radio guy got fired for being a fucking idiot. So well, but mm. to, but the movie makes it up like, but you know they were trying to silence the newscaster that knew the truth, right? They're like, yeah. you know, he announced the the cure and then was fired immediately after. And I'm like, well, I can think of a lot of reasons that might have been <laughs> <laughs> without conspiracies, yeah. But then we learned that after Max died, Charlotte, his daughter, kept plugging away at his cancer cure afterwards, right? She, uh, sorry, this is the first time we run into this movie's sloppy ass ADR. So the actual quote in the movie is she encouraged 
her father to publish his first book because encourage has been ADR'd over some other word that ended in Nate. <laughs> yeah. I was just reading the Bulgarian subtitles so I could stay with everything as best oh, I right, could. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, that made it that made it much, much easier to follow. <laughs> and this is where we start seeing like his books like slowly rotating and so uh-huh. oh, they filmed this bit in the Hall of Rotating Book Translations in the Gerson Museum, which I assume <laughs> is, is where this is all happening. Right, right. But yeah, his book is so good. It's been translated into Chinese and Korean, y'all. And then she closes this off by saying at the time of his death, he was tracking over 1,500 patients. And I'm like, wow, that cure sure does seem clinically tested, doesn't it? <laughs> right? And the thing is, the, the book that he was talking about was it was called something like 50, 50 Case Studies on Gerson Therapy, which is like, mm-hmm. this isn't just some anecdotes. This is four dozen anecdotes. <laughs> right. So it must be true, essentially. And I thought, is this the point where I get out my spreadsheet of people who used crowdfunders in order to try Gerson therapy, but died within five years. Oh. So I did that and I found 145 cases that I had found where I could prove the person had died, which is presumably three times as convincing, therefore, as Gerson's book. So I think <laughs> I, I win on that. <laughs> right. Well, and then it, that's just the thing, right? That's the entire fucking game given away. They say he was tracking over 1,500 patients and his book was 50 people who didn't die from it. Right, fifty out of fifteen hundred, and and that's not all yes. of the patients he's ever treated. It's thousands and thousands, right? Yeah, and it's it's great because the book they show you some of the pages from the book, and they've got a picture of a guy with like a, a fucked up nose, like he's clearly had cancer like around the nose, and he's got like quite a, a, a disfigured nose. But they've anonymized the guy by putting white boxes over his eyes in the picture. <laughs> like, I feel like the eyes. nose is going to be the giveaway. <laughs> I feel like he'd still recognize Steve if his nose looked like that. Yeah, I would recognize Voldemort even in his sunglasses. Yeah, what, giant nose tumor, Steve. No, no, no. We'll do his eyes, and then we'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> this is like when the Dutch police arrested a bird for a crime and one of the local news groups put little black rectangles over the eyes of the bird to protect the bird. Amazing. So, okay. So then we we pan over shelves of, after shelves of all the patient data that Dr. Gerson was tracking and they try to make it seem like this is a lot of boxes. There are nine of them. Right. Yeah. And and two of them have the word unsorted on the label, which makes me question their record keeping. Uh, Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been years now. Yeah. You know what else is making me question things? Boxes of um, the cure for cancer are being saved like your friend's dad's penthouse collection. Right. Yes. (laughs) Right. Come on. In the fucking garage, all mildewy and shit. But yeah, Charlotte Gerson, who is in her 80s at this point. Well, she in, in real life, she's dead at this point. But when they made this movie in 2004, she was in her 80s. She's looking over some of these uh, uh, records. The movie tells us that she has a cancer institute in California and another one in Tijuana because a lot of the shit she wants to do isn't legal in California, you see. Yeah. And I just love the way it shows her like going through those records because, you know, she just loves to reminisce through all the boxes of confidential patient information like any good therapist would. Right, Yeah. right. (laughs) And look, I know you're already fighting an uphill battle when you're an old lady with a German accent (laughs) and you're trying not to come across as evil. But I got a I got a suggestion for you. Maybe you don't pull out your fucking carved elephant tusk crocodile to show that to everybody on the fucking movie. Like she literally, she pulls this thing out and she's like, look at this. An elephant died just so that we could have this thing. Yeah. Yeah. This, this ivory is entirely illegal. And they even say it was made by natives in Africa. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? As opposed to migrants into Africa who took up whittling. Like I assume they were natives who made it. (laughs) Okay. I'm guessing they just wanted something here. And this was by far her least problematic piece of memorabilia. (laughs) They were like, I guess we're going with the poached ivory thing then. The the heads of your enemies? Why would you pull that out? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're also lighting her. She's like sat in front of a fire and she's lit in the way that I would light her to make her look evil. And I thought, is the director secret? on our side could they just get <laughs> that the lighting guy was on our side and they just could not get him to do it any other way than this i'm sorry man she just looks <laughs> evil no matter what we do yeah and also there's this weird moment where they're like and you know who didn't get gerson therapy walt disney look what happened to him fucking mm. dead yeah they don't point out that steve mcqueen did get gerson therapy yep. and we know what happened to him yeah yeah, exactly. But they were like, if Walt had gotten it, he'd have been alive today. I'm like, he would have been 103 when you made this movie. What the fuck are you talking about? 
Gerson therapy turns you into cancer, which is immortal. Oh, is right. Okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's just all cancer. Unfortunately, you're parasitic at that point. But hey, what are you going to do? There's also a note in here where they talk about like someone's daughter and they're going through the official case notes and they say that she had an undecipherable skin disease. It's like, yeah, but like if your skin disease is decipherable, it means you've been possessed by some kind of demon who's trying to communicate with <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Freddy Krueger's <laughs> in there. <again. laughs> I think that's a tattoo you're describing. That's yeah. just words on the skin. So then, so we, we see a lady going into the Gerson Institute, which by the way, looks like if you've ever lived in a small town where there's a local genealogical center in, in downtown or whatever, it looks like that building, right? Oh, okay. Because I don't have that reference. So to me, it just looks like a, a house where like your elderly aunt lives in the suburbs. It didn't look anything right, more yeah. official than that to me. Yeah. Looks like a really scary episode of Hoarders was about to happen as we're going in. And then we go in and I'm like, yep, yep. Hoarders. Wow. Yeah, it basically is. It says she established it in 1977. And from the look of it, she last decorated it in 1978. Because yeah. it's right. not changed. Yeah. You got to get rid of these penthouses and these cures for cancer. It's too much. <laughs> Come on. 1977. In case you wonder how... American skepticism is doing ultimately, yeah. And and the narrator cuts in and she and 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 he's like, well, you know, the Gerson Institute does all kind of things like seminars and luncheons, and I'm like, it's a cancer clinic, and the first two goddamn functions you thought to list were seminars and luncheons. Yeah, <laughs> we do trust falls sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> So we watch people cut vegetables. And of course, they haven't told you yet that that is the therapy, that like that's pretty much half of it right there. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it, it looks like they're just preparing a buffet for the guests. But no, that's the treatment. What they're doing right there is the treatment. It's right, a really yeah. long section of watching salad happen. Like, did somebody <laughs> tell them salad is bad? Like, who are they arguing against? It seems like they're arguing against an anti-salad conspiracy that I've never heard of. Right, yeah. <laughs> And and Charlotte Gerson is she she cuts in really quickly to to let us know that hey funny enough in Mexico they're allowed to call what they do a hospital, <laughs> and then we get that we meet these two Czechoslovakian doctors that want to open up their own Gerson clinic in Czechoslovakia. Yeah, and so they they talk about this uh, this hospital as if it's going to be a thing that's going to be opening. Oh, they've meet they're meeting with Charlotte. They're going to be opening this that hospital. It never opened in Czechoslovakia, partly because the laws wouldn't allow it there, and also partly because Czechoslovakia stopped existing twelve years say, before yeah. this film was made. <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't help. Yeah, and the, the Czech doctor is looking at us so blankly, and I hope it's because he's thinking, ugh, we came all this way to talk to her, and it turns out she's fucking crazy. God, why isn't Zoom invented in 2004? <laughs> this could have been a Zoom meeting. Well, the, what I, the impression I got looking at their faces was just like, yeah, 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 it's all bullshit. Just give me the certificate or whatever. I came a long fucking way. Right. right? But then we meet some former patients that are practitioners at the clinic, right? We meet Kara Beard, whose daughter's asthma was miracled away by apple juice, right? And ass coffee. Yeah, because she said like her, her daughter had really bad asthma and then she read about Gerson therapy and it made sense to her. So like, so far we hadn't been told what Gerson therapy is, but it's, it's eight coffee enemas a day. So pouring cold coffee up her nine-year-old daughter's ass eight times a day to cure her asthma made sense to this lady. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady now runs the institute. She's right, now in yes. charge of like the day-to-day -day running. I need her to name some things that don't make sense to her. Just for <laughs> scale. <laughs> Where is that part of the scale? And she never actually says that her daughter survived. She said her daughter didn't have another asthma attack. Oh. So technically she could be correct on that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird. She's like, my, my daughter's asthma was cured. My chronic fatigue was cured. Also, I got cancer and that was cured by the curse. And I'm like, lead with the fucking cancer, lady. The fuck are you doing? But worse than that, she said like, she said she and her daughter like changed all of their diet throughout the toxic food, changed their entire lifestyle. Her daughter got better. And then she herself developed cancer. So like, right. You got sick after you started doing Gerson therapy. It clearly doesn't work that well, right? Well, no, because she did more Gerson therapy and the cancer went away, right? Yeah. Then she also, she starts talking about how like the scars on her face from a car accident started to disappear and you could just feel the boss right off camera going, dial it back, dial it back. This is sounding stupid now. <laughs> Yeah, well, she says even about her cancer, she said the doctors said, like, you've got a tumor there. We're going to do a wait and see. It doesn't look like it's cancerous, but we're going to wait and see. So she waited and saw, but also did some quackery at the same time. And the doctor's complete lack of concern proved me right. There was no need to be worried, but it was the quackery that cured her cancer. Yes. It wasn't just like the doctors were like, no, it's probably fine, but we'll keep an eye on it. 
a year later, no, it was fine after all. That's that's the whole story here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this whole movie is Donald Trump taking credit for April having happened when he predicted that <laughs> yeah. April was going to happen. <laughs> right. And then, okay, and then we meet a lady who is cured of inoperable cervical cancer. Yep. She's a former patient and uh, like a grandniece of Max Gerson. Yeah, so you know she's objective because there are two metrics there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Literally paid by the Gerson Clinic and is the next witness for the Gerson Clinic. Yeah. <laughs> this is also where I wrote in my notes the ADR in this movie is trying to make Madam Webb feel better about itself. Oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> At one point, they ADR'd in just the word institute. And I don't know what word they could have said instead of institute that they needed to insert institute in, <laughs> but they only inserted it into the right channel. Yes. So it just felt like someone had like lent in through the wall of my office just to say the word institute and <laughs> fucked off again. <laughs> I'm sure whatever they said was like hospital or clinic or whatever. They're like, nope, legally protected term. Right. Can't say that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That is fair. That's their lawyer leaning in from the right yelling <laughs> institute. <laughs> so yeah, so this, but this, this one patient's like, yeah, you know, my doctors told me they needed to operate on my cancer. And I said, no. So I went to Mexico instead to get bullshit. And at this point, I was writing that, yeah, it feels like real medicine doesn't need a constant stream of former patients coming in to say, trust me, this did work. And, you know, not to bring us down, but the ones it didn't work for aren't coming in to tell their story. Oh, yes. the constant stream of people, yeah, this, this killed me. I died, actually. And here's my testimony. Right. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, we get this one guy who describes himself as a bit of a maverick when it comes to his own goddamn health. Yeah, which is patient code for I am a fucking nightmare. I will be yes. your doctor's nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this was the old guy who started to describe his prostate exam in fucking graphic detail and they had to cut. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed him. He goes like, you know, they told me I was going to need surgery and I was like, fuck off. And I did Gerson therapy and I, and I lost a lot of weight. And I'm like, yeah, cancer will do that to you, man. Sure. And so will shitting all day. So we're right. like just <laughs> yes. constantly shitting. Yes. And like, I'm not going to be funny, but like, he's not a man who walks like he's free from an obstructive growth inside his rectum. When you see him walking, <laughs> so, I'm like, I, 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 I checked out if I were you. Yeah, but he tells us he's like, when it comes to medical shit, he doesn't believe it till he sees it. He's like doubting Thomas. He's not going to believe your diagnosis until he can finger your spear holes. Right, but like, if your example is prostate cancer, don't compare yourself to the disciple who checked things by putting his fingers in places. Because like now everyone's still thinking that you're spending all day finger up your ass. There's no other way. <laughs> like I was a bowling ball that day. Yes. <laughs> So, okay, so now it's time for us them to start slow rolling the therapy itself. We are 22 minutes in this movie. They finally are like, well, part of it is juice, right? <laughs> so, so we see this fucking juicer from like 1874 London or some shit, right? <laughs> right. And at the same time as we see that, they're saying like, okay, yeah, it is all about juice, but you can't get the good medicine juice without our bleeding edge smushing technology that you're looking at right Brian, now from, from the industrial revolution yes. with a smokestack coming out of it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, look, it's really important that fruit is juiced, but it's got to be juiced using a device that you've got to mortgage your house in order to afford. But yes. that's fine because at the end of the treatment, you won't be needing that house anyway. So it all kind of works itself <laughs> out. Okay. I think they're literally claiming here that if you use less than one ton of pressure to, to like smush a carrot, it's not going to cure the cancer. Yes. Right? Yes. They specifically say that you, you have to smush it first with one ton of pressure and then juice the smush. <laughs> you juice the smush. Is, yeah. That should have been the Gerson <laughs> strap line. <laughs> juice the smush. Gerson therapy. What if you use two tons of pressure? I feel like then like you, you're oh, like... I think you circle back around to cancer. You actually give yourself Oh, cancer I was thinking that. you get an yeah. anti-tumor and it's like a rollover plan. So like <laughs> the next tumor you get is canceled maybe. And it does sort of feel like we're watching one of those like how it's made YouTube videos but for tragic cancer deaths. Right, That's what yeah. it feels like this is uh, showing us. Right. Also, shouldn't it be like like one ton per an area for the pressure thing to make sense? No, no, it's just one one ton. What are you talking about? What are you just talking anywhere. About? Okay, just sorry. Making, <laughs> it's not, it doesn't even make sense. So, but yeah, but they explained that the guy who invented that particular juicer lived to be 117. So, 
it must be magical. But no, he fucking didn't. Did you guys look this up? Oh, no, he didn't I didn't. Live. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Norman Walker. No, no. He said Norman Walker died on June 6th at the age of, at the age of 117. It's like, no, he fucking didn't. He was 99. And on top of that, he wasn't a doctor. He didn't have a PhD. So when you introduced him as Dr. Norman Walker, that wasn't true either. Yeah, this guy was just a liar. He's an basically. honorary doctor of letters for turning 99 at some university. Just right. say 99, though. That's impressive. That's really you, you fucking old. Lie. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ, you've got to lie about that? He was also, he was the author of the book Diet and Salad, which is a book that would scare a young No Illusions more than anything in the Goosebumps series. Those oh, two yeah. Things. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. And there's another line in this that I just, I had to write down. It says, when juice is drunk, it can enter the bloodstream almost as fast as alcohol. So, right, you just mean liquid there. So <laughs> right. Why don't you go one better and say, well, you know, when apples are crushed up and heated over a spoon, they can be injected into the bloodstream <laughs> exactly. almost as fast as heroin. <laughs> I was like, two tons of pressure and you just mainline that shit. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right. Yeah, You're double immortal. No, but they explain this. So they, they tell us that you have to drink 13 eight-ounce glasses of juice a day, which is just shy of a fucking gallon. Yeah. Right? And and then they say, but, you know, you don't just get juice. You also eat food. And I'm like, OK, but that's true of all. You all, you eat food no matter what therapy you're doing, you dumbass. <laughs> yes. So you've got to have a, an hourly, like, smo smooshed juice every hour for 13 hours. It's going to be freshly juiced using that medieval carrot torturing device you've been watching. <laughs> yes. Which means you can never, ever be more than, say, half an hour away from home. And you're not right. getting into the pulp or the fiber, <laughs> so you're going to end up like on the on the on the toilet uh, with some real issues. So basically, every hour of your waking life is going to be divided into twenty minutes of peeling and chopping vegetables, ten minutes of juicing and drinking it, twenty minutes of aggressive <laughs> shitting, and ten minutes of living. So you yeah. know you, you do get that every hour. Well, living your best life, though. Yeah. <laughs> Mark. I was like, all right, I'm starting to understand how the anima becomes part of the plan. Like that's yeah, just the you know, gravy no or whatever. Shit. <laughs> but to be clear, the movie like. Names numbers by accident for a second. They're like, yeah, okay. So that would be like 104 ounces of smushed carrots daily. That's like 22 pounds of physical carrots Jesus. every day. That seems impossible, doesn't it? No, it's not though. Yeah. No, that's what they show us it. They show us what a day's worth of food looks like. And if I, I paused and I counted it, it was 50 carrots. Two whole red cabbages, three whole heads of broccoli, more than a dozen oranges, and about like eight or nine apples, and one bell pepper every day. That's what you get to take every single day. Jesus. And this is a regime Fucking that the lady said made sense to cure a nine year old's asthma. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what, this whole thing is starting to feel way too much like Eli taking me to a restaurant. So I need a break, but we're going to be back in a minute with even more of the Gerson Miracle. Dr. Brown Green, Dr. Green Brown, thank you so much for coming. Of course. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, this Dr. Max Gerson has finally hit upon the miracle cure for cancer and all other human maladies. Mm, seems weird that you'd say cancer and all other human maladies. Yeah, just all human maladies would already cover that. Yeah. The cancer. Well, I was, I'm adding emphasis. Yeah, okay. So what was the cure? I heard it was apple juice and ass coffee. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. And, and as I'm sure you'll agree, we can't afford to let any cure go public. We'll be ruined. We'll be what? Yeah, how so? Ruined? Well, yeah, for the, all the money that we make off of cancer and all the human maladies, it's just it's, that'll that'll dry right up. No, no it won't. Uh we'll just use this new miraculous treatment instead of the other stuff. Obviously. Right. Yeah, like apple juice and ass coffee, that's gonna be way easier than what we're doing now. So much easier. Well, right, but but you can but we can't patent that. Well, no, but as Dr. Gerson and his generations show, you can make a lot of money off promoting the therapy and prescribing supplements with it. There's that. Right, but not not that would that would be different money though. So You'd rather allow people to die from diseases that could be easily cured just because you don't want to learn a new skill. Or just slightly adjust the one you have? Slightly adjust it. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but how can you suppress something as simple as apple juice and ass coffee? Well, we, we'll, we'll make it illegal. Illegal to drink apple juice and to squirt coffee up your bum? Well... 
just I know just illegal to do it. You know, like uh, ther- therapeutically. Okay, but won't people notice that a small subset of them are immortal from from all the apple juice and all the ass coffee? Uh, shockingly, no, no one will ever notice. Nah, I feel like they, would. Seems like they would. Now, as long as no nauseously filmed YouTube videos slip through the cracks, we should be okay. This seems like a really dumb plan. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on the admission that, yes, there is more to this therapy than just pulverized juice, right? We learned that nutrition is only half the battle. I'm pretty sure the other half is knowing. Uh, so, <laughs> right? But no, but they explain that we have to get rid of our accumulated toxins because, quote, our lifestyles have us dying while we're still alive. <laughs> I did not hear that quote. That's incredible. That's, That's the only kind of the nature of the word. Dying. <laughs> so. And this is where we see like footage of Charlotte Gerson and things. And it's like, okay, maybe don't take a health advice from someone who is very clearly staring at a computer monitor in a completely pitch black room, just lit up <laughs> by the blue of the computer. This is not good for you. Why is this movie intentionally lighting her like she's the villain at all times? It's like it knows. Well, they, this is also where they... They like reveal her book, but they do it in the spinning book room. So it looks like they're <laughs> unveiling the super weapon, right? <laughs> yeah. And they are. And they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are yeah. <laughs> it could be, you know, uh, the, the toxins. It could be the squirrels can't jump across the world anymore. It could be <laughs> the computer dungeon at the Gerson Clinic. There's a lot of... A lot of different factors going on. <laughs> right, yes. Bad for your health. So yes, and, and he's like, you know, in her book, she lists all the different environmental toxins and we see like the list, right? Like they're panning down the list and they're like, and it's really long. And I'm like, well, she had to make that word count somehow, didn't she? Exactly. And it's the voiceover says the toxins are in the most surprising places. But if you pause and look at the list, one of the things that's a surprising place for toxins is industrial toxins. So uh, that doesn't yeah. seem that surprising. <laughs> Oh, industrial, yes. No, you need artisanal yeah. toxins if you're going to get the toxins. <laughs> Heirloom toxins. <laughs> but then he's trying to show us all of the toxins that we're exposed to, and he's like, look at these power lines, and there's microwaves. That probably gives you cancer, right? And think about getting into your car. Yeah. And when he says that, they zoom in on the like California cancer warning that's on cars, like, oh, you know, getting into your car might cause cancer. Look, a fucking cancer warning in California means as much as the Pope's blessing, okay? Just yeah. fucking shut up with that. Yeah, it's like, right, lesson learned, don't lick the car seats. That's all we <laughs> learned from this. Yes, fine. They also say that all of dentistry gives you cancer, apparently, mm-hmm. like everything they do. And I was like, okay, well, that, I guess that's not a problem because you live on baby food. You don't really need teeth. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> so all lines They're up. all juicing and mush. Yeah. So, and, and then they go through this, there's this like this three minute long fucking Hitchcockian pan through a cheap motel room to catalog all the various toxins that we'll encounter. And they make it seem like this is a typical day. It's like you get in the car, then you drive to like a cheap motel because, you know, you're a low level hitman, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why else you're in this. You're like really... fucking Jack Reacher. Yes. <laughs> and it tries to like make it all terrifying in there. Like, you know, it's a nightmarish mix of toxins from a nearby car that like comes and electronic fields from the light switch. Like the there's a pop scare on the light switch. Like, yep. oh, not the light switch. Like everywhere you go, they're trying to do like scary music. Like the yes. bathtub is going to get you. The empty bathtub is going to get you. Seriously, I felt really bad for the orchestra that did the soundtrack here because the score was just like pop scare, pop scare, pop scare, pop scare. They're just looking at everything. Right. They don't know what to do. They're just trying to do stings after stings after stings. Ah, oh. and just, just more generally though, the danger of going to the meth motel that I'm looking at is not the exhaust <laughs> for two minutes of the car in the parking lot outside of your room. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they go through all the chemicals that are there. They don't even get to the chemicals that are present in the cum that's inevitably coating the mattress in that place. They don't even get to those those chemicals. He's like, they they go into the bathroom and he's like, oh, you think you can clean the toxins off in this tub? But the tub is toxic. And this toilet paper? Well, that's going to smear toxins all up in your body. And I'm like, how? Are, where are you putting the toilet paper, man? I mean, <laughs> yeah. how far in does it go? And he says, you know, the toilet has been sanitized for your protection and there is no way the toilet seat in this motel has ever been sanitized for anyone's protection. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love to because he's like, and then you go to bed. You know better than to use one of those brain cancer causing cell phones, but the landline's still pretty bad. <laughs> and the alarm clock, the alarm yes. clock is like pumping electronic waves into your head overnight. All, all the into time. your <laughs> dreams and shit. There is no line in this rant that could not be logically followed by a warning that they're coming for our precious bodily fluids. Okay. And he ends the end with like, even this movie is toxic and bad for your health because they're talking about the film. But I just wrote, buddy, you've got no idea how yeah, true that is. Right. <laughs> but don't worry. There is a better way. Most of the toxins can be removed with strict adherence to the Gerson therapy. This is the part where we're going to add organic coffee to the mix, but not <sighs> from that direction. Right. Did we all think these were peanuts at first? It cuts to like a massive vat of peanuts. And I yes. thought, oh, fuck, you're also going to have to eat like a two liter jug of peanuts every day as well. This is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, they pan over what I was sure was evil peanuts. And then I was like, oh, no, it's that's actually healing organic coffee beans. <laughs> they just forgot to stop the evil pop scare music from the last scene and like the demonic right. contrast filter for everything. <laughs> And then the orchestra, I felt bad again. They had to do this jarring cut. They're doing all this evil shit. And then it was like, no, no, no. Oh, it's organic coffee. Boop, doop, boop, boop, yeah, this fucking yes. pan flute cuts in. And I'm like, the yeah. pan flute music under the coffee up the ass portion of the movie is that's a nice touch. Yeah, it <laughs> sort of feels like the uh, the theme from the original Star Trek. But if it was produced by Studio Ghibli, that's what the, the music <laughs> is under this, uh, yes. under this scene. Yeah. Okay, and they they tell us the reasoning here for a second. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, so 22 pounds of carrots made into juice. That destroys a liver. So, yeah, that's on us. Uh, we found the <laughs> cure to our own thing, which is yes. fixing the liver by shooting coffee up your ass. Yeah, yeah. you need to be distracted with an anal espresso or a, a, a crappuccino. Yeah, that's what you need. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Brilliant. so like... Wouldn't you just do drinking coffee first, at least? Like It's going to wind up there anyway, yeah. Or maybe they did, and then he was like, hold on, what about ass first? <laughs> like, what's oh. the brain space when you're coming up with coffee enema? But maybe, maybe he went the other way. Maybe he just went straight to the coffee enema before he thought of drinking it, and therefore, maybe he did that with the juice as well. <gasps> maybe originally it was like <laughs> right. 13 juices up the arse, which explains why you're having so much, because you're not going to, you're not going to like, actually absorb much of it anally. So like, yeah, right. we just like have a constant flood of juice up your ass and maybe some of it will somehow get into your system. Okay, so you know how putting stuff in your mouth makes you expel shit from your butt sometimes? What if we flip <laughs> the paradigm? Weird. So also, by the way, if you're trying to sell me on squirting coffee up my ass, don't show it to me while it's steaming fucking hot over and over again, right? Mm. Yeah, at least he went mouth to ass. I guess that's good <laughs> sure. in yep, some yep. sense. Okay. <laughs> but now they're like, okay, so how does one blow coffee up one's ass? And I'm like, if I had a nickel, Doc. What? Yeah. Ass coffee. Said, how does one make a coffee <laughs> enema? So, okay, it feels like there's only two steps and one long hose. I think that's the entire right, lesson. Yes, right? exactly, exactly. I was like, start with mung beans, right? <laughs> And then, and you got it. You move to the coffee, I think, is the key also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't, the coffee moved to you. That hurts. Yeah, right. But he says it, it starts with a quart of distilled water. And I wrote, well, first it starts with looking at what the fuck a quart is. What the fuck is a quart? Like, use the <laughs> metric system. It is literally a thousand times better than the imperial. <laughs> Not even like 960, <laughs> literally a thousand times better. Yeah, <laughs> nice and round. <laughs> yeah, so so first you, you bring, a, if you want to make an uh, ass coffee enema at home. You you can follow along. You bring a quart of water. Don't do this. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the stove, you bring it to a boil. You add in three tablespoons of drip ground coffee, only legitimate use of drip ground coffee, to be fair. And then you stir, simmer on low heat for 15 minutes, and strain. Come on, 15 minute brew time. You're ruining that ass coffee. That's absurd. <laughs> 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 and also, so then they, they strain it into this measuring cup and we sit here and we watch this measuring cup cool for an entire violin solo. <laughs> yeah. And the shots of this brown liquid already look revolting before it's been in anyone's yes. eyes. It's already looked disgusting. And it's so, it's triggering to me because we see it in the measuring cup. It's like, I can see the milliliters just there. You can show, you're showing me the milliliters and you're just ignoring. You've gone above the red line. This is horrifying. <laughs> Learn to read a meniscus. Fuck. <laughs> 
So then it's like, oh, and by the way, you're going to want to take your ass coffee in a relaxing environment. And I'm like, did you think we were going to do it in traffic? What, <laughs> what did you have in mind? But he takes it, he says you do it in like a candlelit environment because you've got to like romance the coffee into your ass or something. <laughs> okay, and this was the same candle from the beginning. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So in my head, this ass coffee scene and <laughs> the title cards at the beginning happened right next to each other in the filming of this documentary. Going at the same time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we all noticed there was a guy in the background, right? The, all, yes. the whole way of this uh, of the enemy shot, there's a guy just like writhing uncomfortably he in a bed in the background. Unhappy. Yes. I was worried about that, dude. Yeah. Oh. Uh huh. Yeah. This was the original two girls, one cup video right here. As an illustration, <laughs> for sure. So, and then they're like, oh, by the way, let it cool to body temperature. Oh, boy, did we learn that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Best part of waking up. <laughs> two girls and one cup. Just coffee you in your ass. Yeah. So, and, and then, and then we get to the point where it's like, pour it into the enema bucket and then they're like, well, now we have to say stick it up your ass. How do we say that fancy? It says, and then once rectal insertion is accomplished, and I'm like, oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you want to use the passive voice for that. I think that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's the, the best ADR in the movie. So there's a the little stopper at the end of the enema tube that, you know, you let you, you open it up when, once it's up your ass. In the video, they've got the stopper way too close to the end of the tube, right? Mm. And so... They cut in on the ADR and they're like, by the way, you want eight inches of tube there. That part doesn't go up your ass. The stopper, once you get it up there, there's no way to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patreon goal for the PJ party is locked. <laughs> in. I will. Ha I, there's a number for me and it's, yes. it's not that high. Yep. It's yeah. not that high of a number. I'm on board. No, but it's a higher number because we'd also have to combine it with Eli's coffee order and this is it's not going to be any better. <laughs> yeah. No matter how he's taking it. This is a good point. And then they're like, once it's drained, it is, once you get passive voice, it is retained in the colon for 12 to 15 minutes. And I'm like, I feel like that's trickier than you're, you're making it sound, man. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Hold. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last 15 steps. <laughs> So then, okay, so we cut over to Charlotte so that we can deify her some more. <laughs> and I noticed we cut here. We don't get a what happens after you've held a liter of coffee in your ass for a quarter of an hour sure in don't. the tutorial right. in this movie. We move straight on at that point. No, no. And this was the best, best segue because they had to be like, no, don't, not, we're done with that information. <laughs> we do other stuff also with Gerson therapy. <laughs> And speaking of blowing shit out of your ass, here's Charlotte Gerson some more. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and they're like, you know, hundreds of physicians around the world have been trained by Charlotte. And I'm like, okay, look, even if this shit was real, would physicians really need this lady's advice on how to juice apples and squirt wheat coffee up people's asses? <laughs> right? Like, I feel like they'd be able to figure that shit out. You got to know the tonnage. I guess that's one detail. But that's just like <laughs> right. a text. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's one, by the way. Yeah, right. It's one. <laughs> <laughs> it's shocking that it's exactly one unit in right? yeah. the, the imperial system. Weird. Americans never get to feel that. So, yeah. And then the narrator's like, you know, it's illegal in the U.S. to treat people with this stuff. Can you believe that? And I'm like, I honestly can't, but from the different direction than the one you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah, like, unbelievably, it's illegal to inflate cancer patients like big coffee-filled balloons. What are they thinking, <laughs> those regulators? <laughs> so, but then they talk about her, her hospital, quote unquote, in Mexico. And he says, again, and I quote, most patients who have inoperable cancer leave the hospital to continue the therapy at home. And I'm like, <laughs> well, all of them leave the, the hospital. <laughs> yeah. You're just arguing that she isn't kidnapping people. That's all right. you're denying. And, and <laughs> it feels like that needed denying. I also, I also like the fact that she commutes to Mexico. It's like, yeah, because the U.S. border is more porous than a cancerous colon. So yeah, therefore, so Charlotte exactly. just commutes to Mexico. The rectal exams for her when she crosses that border, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> they stop doing that. They learn their lesson yep, after the yep. one. <laughs> so, you keep saying hold, hold. 
And on the thing about like the patients leaving after four weeks to do the, 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 the therapy at home, bear in mind that Gerson clinics typically tell you you're not allowed to get cancer scans because they think the scans make cancer worse. So you go there and they say, OK, now stop checking to see if you've got cancer or not. Now you can leave. But don't check. All right. Definitely don't check. So yeah, that's why uh, people leave after that point. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So. So then we go with her to her Tijuana hospital, like, you know, whatever the fuck they're allowed to call it or whatever. And we talk to a couple of patients they've cured of cancer, two to be specific, right? Of this entire fucking hospital, they could find two people that are like, yeah, I feel good and think this is working. Yeah. Right. The first one's holding a coffee. And I was like, that's a weird moment whenever they serve coffee at a Gerson <laughs> clinic, right? Like, everybody's like, all right. Is that okay. uh, for your, no, for your mouth? Okay. All right. <laughs> And I love the, the Alaskan lady she's talking to, you know, that she's like, you know, well, you know, they told me I had cancer. And so they said I should have chemotherapy. And Charlotte Gerson's like, and you didn't have chemotherapy. And she's like, no, no, no I did have chemotherapy. And, and then I did this bullshit. And uh, mm. hey, what do you know? <laughs> I'm feeling way better. And the thing is, talking to cancer patients about the cancer that they've still got isn't good proof that they're cured of cancer because this is while they're still getting the treatment. So this isn't like the treatment's right. working, I'm cancer-free. It's like, I'm here, I currently have cancer. What do you think you're proving right now, Charlotte? Absolutely nothing. Right. Well, Marsh, this a lady from Alaska, she lost eight centimeters of cancer in the first day. Yeah, I don't think doctors typically measure how well your cancer's doing by using a tape measure. I don't think that's the instrument that they would normally do to tell you how much cancer you've got. Yeah, I don't think it would be one dimensional if they did either. I don't know. What <laughs> well, and even Charlotte's like, mm, maybe dial it back a little bit, right? The way she goes, wow, that's unrealistic. And then she's like, and then it was only two centimeters of, of cancer from that point on. She's much better, <laughs> much better. So, and but then they assure us, they're like, and by the way, there were a lot of other people in Mexico that were getting better. You don't know them. They're in, they're from Mexico, right? Like there was a weird fucking moment where they're like, you know, they didn't have, they were, they had shit going on. Didn't want to talk to us about it, but they were Oh fine. yeah, they had shit going on. They certainly had shit going on. <laughs> it's such an awkward moment being like, nobody else except two people, even though we're curing them all of cancer, wanted yes. to be in our documentary. Mm. No, yeah. they're just constantly shitting and the film crew was like, we can't use this. this is <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is why the, the voiceover says, and despite the success and statistics, it's like, yeah, neither of those things are these testimonials. No, nope. These two stories are not successes and they're not statistics. But yeah, despite these things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then it's like, all right, so maybe those anecdotes didn't convince you. How about these anecdotes, right? <laughs> So we carry on to a new... So this is where we meet Debbie. This is where we meet a dog. This is where we meet a dog. Well, okay, so Debbie... Oh, we do meet a dog. Debbie has a dog on her lap to distract us from how horrifying her fucking story is. But yes. I was so mad. I was like, don't use a dog to trick me right now. I'm very happy and I don't like this. I don't like that I'm yes. happy watching your piece <laughs> of shit liar movie. That dog is getting the massage of its life and it is right? loving every second of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He scritches. <laughs> yeah. And while she's scritching the dog, she's like, yeah, you know, cells. my my dog or my dog. Yeah, see, it's doing it to me right there. <laughs> my doctor told me that I needed chemo and I said no. So this movie is directly saying to us, don't follow your doctor's advice if they recommend chemo. But don't worry, there's a cute dog. Well, they do yeah, it. absolutely. Right. And the thing is that what they're pointing out here is that like, oh, lots of former patients are still in touch with Charlotte. And okay, that already sounds fairly ethically dubious that she like keeps in, in touch and becomes close friends with them. But the point is that the former patients who survive, yeah, they tend to like Charlotte. Yeah. The dead ones don't so much. Right. She's not in touch with the dead ones. So of course, the yeah. only people we could talk to are the ones who are still alive. Yeah, right. exactly. And this is where they claim that like chemo just kills you, kills all your cells. Gerson therapy makes all your cells extra strong so they can eat the cancer. And then at this point, I was like, hold on, though. Wouldn't the cancer cells be all like yoked up on Captain America carrot <laughs> serum, too? And it would be a problem. Right. They <laughs> ate their spinach, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's also this point in Debbie's story where she's like, you know, I kept going to my doctor and they just never seen something so miraculous. And the way she tells the story, it's very obvious that the doctor was just was just a good doctor, right? He's like, you know, mm. she was like, I would come in and he would always comment on how upbeat I was and how, well, he just couldn't even believe that I was one of his cancer patients. And I'm like, that just sounds like a doctor being nice. And she's like, so obviously he was so impressed with my ass coffee that I was unlike any other patients. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and there's a bit in her story where they've had to do like a cut. And so they cut to like a close up of the dog. But it just makes it seem like it's the dog telling their cancer story as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> At one point, they had to take away the dog because, like, it was like too cute and too happy for like a cancer speech, and they cut. Mm -hmm. Now the dog's not with her, and then we get some other lady telling mm. the cancer story. But the camera guy's just like playing with the dog, yeah. and won't shoot the other lady. Is the best. Yeah, but now, but Debbie knew three other ladies that had the same cancer as her at the same time. They didn't get the therapy, and they all died. So there's that. Then we, we hear from Debbie's daughter, who sure is glad her mom didn't get that stupid chemo. And that is the kind of cancer expert that we do need for a balanced film here. A daughter who was 12 when her mum got cancer. That's right. the kind of expertise that mm -hmm. we should be really relying on to, to tell people to follow up. Yeah. Or how about we hear from Deb's husband, who married her after all this shit happened? Yeah, exactly. He said, I met her a few years ago and, and we immediately get cut off. And that might be because as we see him, a phone rings in the background yes. and we hear the fucking conversation happening. Yes. We can like, hear just someone do a different take. take. They didn't even go, we're filming, I'll call you back. They're having no. a fucking conversation. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, we've got the, the film crew in. Yeah, about the ass coffee stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's piled up everywhere. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but wait, there's another anecdote out of Colorado, and this is the hardest this movie is ever going to be, right? Mm -hmm. This is where we meet 12-year-old Stephanie. Now, Stephanie, and, and now the movie is going to tell us that we shouldn't get chemo for our children who have cancer, right? Just to let you know where we're at. So they start telling us Stephanie's story. She had cancer of the everything. She had a 10 and a half hour surgery and then 15 other surgeries and chemo. The kid had really been through some serious shit, right? She had yeah, like five, yeah. six kilometers of tumor and the doctors just had to like rip organs out with spoons. They actually say she was a bald skeleton, like the a exact bald words. bald skeleton. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. Fuck you, this movie. That's, that's it's, it's genuinely horrific to hear that. And that's not even the worst thing that they say. It's like, Christ, this kid has been through so much. Don't make her be a testimonial as well as this. Because like, yeah. she's been through all of that and now she's in a Gerson therapy documentary. So the answer isn't, and then she was perfectly fine and right. healthy for the rest of her life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Also, was anybody picturing a hairy skeleton? That was just a weird thing to say. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Skeletons <laughs> typically are both. Mm. So, but then we hear from the little girl herself and she's like, so my mom, she heard about this alternative stuff and so they took that family's money. Mm -hmm. Right? They charged this family, they gave them false hope, they made them pay for a pointless trip to Tijuana and on top of whatever they charged them for fucking apple juice and coffee enemas. Okay, question. Do you think kids get ass cocoa instead of ass coffee? <laughs> <at the places? laughs> at least decaf. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, no, congratulations. This is a hard one to make jokes for. Well done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when we get what is, this is the, the, my best worst, the most evil line ever included in a gam film. At the end of this kid's testimonial, the voiceover says, for now, this obviously is not a report of a totally cured patient. So, yeah, you're saying... The kid still got fucking cancer. She's only been doing Gerson therapy for like a year or something like that. Like, this is still a very sick kid that you're just exploiting for this fucking documentary. And yeah, she's feel, she might have a bit more energy. She said, oh, I feel I've got more energy now. So yeah, you, you've got more energy than, than you had when you were getting chemotherapy or recovering from 16 surgeries. Right. You're going to have a bit more energy than that. But yeah. don't use this poor kid as your fucking testimonial. And, and maybe don't end the segment like a fucking beer commercial with this little kid being like, here's my 13th pint of carrot smoosh in a frosted glass. ka -chack. Yeah. <sighs> oh, Fuck God. It was One of yeah. the hardest things I've ever had to watch. And I watched the go fucking glob glow gab galab for you motherfuckers. There's even a part <laughs> in here where they were like, and the whole family felt better. Even the dog was happy again. And I'm like, motherfucker, leave the dog out of this shit. Right? The dog can't say no. There was no evidence the dog was ever unhappy. We didn't interview the dog about how it, we interviewed a different dog. We didn't interview, interview this dog about how it was feeling. <laughs> now, and and in case this movie has, has made you think that you know all you need to know, right? Because, well, I know how to juice carrots and shove coffee up my ass. They explained to you that you still need to go to the Gerson Clinic because there's also supplements that are very important in terms of the ass coffee and carrot juice diet. Mm-hmm. 
they try to make it all seem very scientific. They say it's all, the therapy is adjusted precisely. It's like, look, it's not adjusted precisely. The therapy is smooshed carrots. They don't like vary how smooth the carrots get. <laughs> You're not like, oh, we need we need you 80% smooshed. You're only an 85% smooshed carrots kind of guy. You take a carrot and you smoosh it. It's not <laughs> yes, that exactly. accurate or precise. Well, maybe the adjustment precisely is depending on butthole situations. I don't know. Something like, like that. How far in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to really need nine inches, actually. <laughs> how ductile? What? <laughs> Yeah, so but but they explain that that Dr. Gerson came up with a, a very important supplement. Apparently, apparently it's a, like an eleven herbs and spices kind of thing. They can't tell us what's in it, but he came up with it after nearly three hundred experiments. I guess it uh, it undoes all the table salt and toothpaste that's been killing you. Oh yeah, this is where they say actually table salt is poison. I think those yes. exact words in this movie. Yep. Yes, they do say that. And I wrote, look, I'm from the northeast of England. Table salt is one of the four main food groups. You take that back. <laughs> Table salt is all we've fucking got. Also, yeah. a medium carrot, I looked this up, has 42 milligrams of sodium. So sure hope the body doesn't have any chloride anywhere coursing <laughs> through it constantly. Your entire bloodstream, idiots. Yeah, uh, this is oh, but this is also where we hear from their flaxseed oil guy in Oregon. Yeah, and for some reason they've chosen to interview him outside of this noisy ass fucking industrial park where their plant is. It's so weird. It's basically, and now we go live to a word from our sponsor, Robert Gaffney of Amiga Flax Oil Production, and he's just outside of his building, like watching trucks go by and like commenting, "Oh, oh that that truck's going into my building." Oh, this one, this one's coming out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, do you want to see some flax? <laughs> I guess. I guess that's what you're here for. At one point, he even talked about how they built the building, like the construction of the building. It's like, yeah, but Why the I mean, I guess that's preferable to like the kids with cancer bit. So like, yeah, tell me more about the structure of the building, uh, Robert. Just let anything so I don't have to watch a 12-year-old explain how ill they are. Seriously, I was waiting for the theme song from the BBC office to come on because it looks like <laughs> Slough. It was just like, all right, go in the building or whatever. Do it. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, he tells us that this is actually the quote most sophisticated oil facility in North America. And I'm like, I don't think that it is, man. Mm. But we watch them press flaxseed oil. They have touch screens for their flaxseed oil pressing. That's pretty sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the flax seeds are not getting a ton of pressure when they get the oil out. It didn't look like, like they had. Precisely. Like, because they had touch screens. So... <laughs> But yeah, they but they explain that flaxseed oil should be consumed raw and cold. Yeah, for maximum discomfort. Yeah. Yeah, right. In case this wasn't unpleasant enough, the coffee up the ass and the fucking 19 gallons of juice, they also drink raw, cold flaxseed oil. God. Yeah. Also, when you're digesting flaxseed oil, I feel like it's going to get up into the, like the high 90s, most likely Fahrenheit, yeah. right? <laughs> right. <laughs> digestion. <laughs> But the narrator says at one point, he's like, there are many holistic approaches to healing. And I'm like, oh, w w what you're saying there is nobody's bullshit has to match. So what if somebody else told you to do the warm flaxseed oil? It's all different, the same. Yeah. And then it says like Gerson therapy utilizes some of them. Is that well, why wouldn't it use all of them? If they're all, if you think they're all valid, why is it going like, oh, no, yeah, to, right. th those things are great, but we don't do them. No, 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 yeah, we, we, do, we, we, we don't want to make it too easy on us. We want to give the cancer a fighting chance. <laughs> Give the cancer a knife and throw them out in the woods. And then you hunt it for a little bit. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and he also claims that over half of the medical visits in the U.S. and Canada are to alternative therapists. There is no way that's true. Yeah, There's I was just saying, citation no needed, but also, holy shit, what a terrifying aspiration, right? Yeah. While they're making up numbers, might as well do another, right? They say, our understanding of holistic medicine here in the United States is 75 years behind the rest of the world. I yeah. think that's the exact words. Yep. Yeah, it is. We, yeah. we cannot allow a bullshit gap to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're also like 600 years behind on our understanding of geocentrism, I guess. That's just a crazy yeah. way to say things, though. All right, well, I, did, I didn't realize our national pride was at stake here, so I guess I'm going to need a minute to reassess. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will this movie accidentally say a true thing? Will they take it back? How much bad shit can I legally hope will happen to them out loud? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the homicidal conclusion of The Gerson Miracle. 
Okay, the boss wants a cancer cure right now, and I feel like we're going in with nothing. This is our last yeah. chance. Walk and talk. Come up with something. Okay. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I thought we were doing the uh, the carrots. You mean just fuck it? Just people eat carrots? Yes. That's dude. That's nothing. Oh no! Well, hold on. Let me finish. What about carrots? But the the juice of carrots. Right, but. But people already eat carrots and drink carrot juice that there's still cancer. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. How hard are they smushing the carrots in a juicer? Do you know? Well, like how much pressure? I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, because I was thinking a literal ton. Nobody's doing that. There's no way anybody's doing that. A Do ton? You, you want to tell the boss that we've, we're going to cure cancer with a Fucking one ton carrots. One ton carrots smasher. Exactly. Dude, we can't tell him that. We got to go in. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll ask him for more time. All right. Hey, boss, it's been a little. Oh, my God. What the fuck is that? Are you putting coffee in your butt with a hose? What? No, no. Okay. Yes. But uh, this, this is, um, is to cure the cancer. Oh. Uh, cool. Great. Idea, boss. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm super happy for the cancer people. So uh, yeah, is is that a coffee for me? Yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah. I got, I got this one for you. Thanks, thanks. Uh, non pasteurized raw milk, right? Well, just, just regular milk. Are you crazy? I'm gonna get osteoporosis. Right. I'm sorry. Been stupid. Like osteoporosis. Sorry. What? Nothing. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. Watch the hose. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action by summarizing what we've learned so far. Veggies down, coffee up. <laughs> right. That's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> then he tries to sell us on buying organic. Right. God. Yeah. This is why he says the foundation of the Gerson therapy is salad. And it's not even me saying that as a joke. He says it's salad. It's, it is salad. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And at that point, I was like, do I need to put salad in my butt now? And I was just kind of like joking to myself. And literally, the movie then immediately cuts to a long shot of a cucumber. And I was like, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Message received. Yeah. I'm on All board right. now. Right, I'm then. listening yes. again. He also says that plants, like the human body, need more nutrients than they get. And I, I really wanted him to start pitching us on how to give a coffee enema to a carrot. Like, just to really sort of turn it on its own. <laughs> and this is where we meet uh, Wes Yamato. He's the foreman of an organic farm. And this man is so nervous to be on camera that I was nervous for him. It was one of those things. He talks entirely in buzzwords throughout this entire interview but at the speed of somebody whose native language isn't buzzword. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like he's cornered you at a party to tell you about the organic <laughs> vineyard his parents have bought. <laughs> yes. Thought, is, is his aim just to talk so long that it leaves no time for the dangerous cancer claims? He's like, I've got to do, if I filibuster, they can stop killing people for at least 10 minutes. <laughs> Seriously, I was like, well, fuck, we can, I will have sex with you. Just stop talking about the vineyard. Nobody cares. Biodynamic is nonsense. That's nothing. <laughs> The narrator comes in and then and and he's like, oh, you know, you can even buy from a farmer's market, right? So now they're trying to sell us on a farmer's market. So we pan for like, I don't know, most of my life over these fucking vegetables poured out of baskets. Do they not know how baskets work? Every one of these baskets is like upended on the side and just spilled out. That's going to be a nightmare to tidy up after. Just leave them in the baskets. Why are you like tipping them out of the baskets? <laughs> There's a basket tipper at this market. That's like the job. Yeah. It's like setting up <laughs> yes, still right. life And a shops. basket untipper. A That's basket the... detipper. Yeah, yeah yes. absolutely. <laughs> exactly. And then also there's a moment where we ride around a produce section from a shopping cart as though we're getting like a, a fucking yam's eye view of things here. Yeah. Yes. And I wrote, finally, this movie is behind bars. Oh, shit. No, it's just a shopping cart. How disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we get a bunch of Charlotte Gerson close-ups here. Mm -hmm. So the movie's like, all right, well, if you have any doubt about Gerson therapy, look at Charlotte Gerson's fuckable skin. Just look at that. <laughs> and I was like, 
What are you talking there about? There was a, a 90 year old woman. Definitely. There was a, but she's pretty fuckable for 83 moment there. Yeah. Holy shit. hundred percent. She has the quality. Her skin has the quality and texture of someone much younger. Texture. Quality. Like, Hey guys, come and feel the quality of my skin. <laughs> <laughs> the camera, you can hear the camera guy being like, huh. <laughs> she said, he says she never does. She doesn't need reading glasses and she never gets sick. And I'm like, Let, show me her reading something. First of all, I don't believe you on the mm. less outrageous claim there. Yeah. Right. And she says uh, on this diet, you never need to worry again about dieting to lose or gain weight. It's like, yeah, mostly because you'll be shitting twice an hour and like most yes. of your focus will be on your tortured <laughs> anus. You have no right. space for worrying about anything else. Yeah. Your entire day is shitting at the same time as eating every right. waking hour. That's all you're doing. Yeah. They actually say Gerson therapy makes you live life to the fullest. And I was like, I mean, I guess if you have some very specific kinks, maybe, <laughs> but mostly no. Also, I have to highlight this one bizarre fucking line. The narrator says, and I quote, it has been said that grocery stores are like mausoleums where dead food lies in state. <laughs> I'm like, oh, but okay, but the guy who was saying that was shouting it in a subway, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Do you want live food in cages walking around <laughs> like as the display? I don't understand. But yeah, he explains that pasteurization is bad, but coffee up your butthole will give you sexy bones. And then he says that Gerson therapy also grants you a higher vibration. Mm -hmm. What would that mean? Cut. <laughs> Yeah, straight well, out. Or spiritual consciousness, then cut. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but, but to be clear, this counts for all religions. Which, whatever your religion is, you'll be more that, too. And then, I guess, really, they're just going to round the movie off now by giving us either medium good advice or good advice so that later they can say, what are you talking about? The movie was dangerous. We told people to get a good eight hours of sleep and drink plenty of water, mm. right? Like that kind of shit. Yeah. Well, they just said that Gerson therapy people are like just clacking around, vibrating like a wind up toy, like the chattering <laughs> teeth. So like, got to ease it back here a little bit. <laughs> right, right. So he tells us the, the power of positive thinking, apparently coffee in your ass clears your mind. And I see how that works, right? Whatever you were yes. thinking about before. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he, he he tells us that coffee up your ass will also cure drug addiction, crime, and mental <laughs> illness. Now, crime, I feel like, you know, look, if we, if I can catch the criminal fast enough, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it says cocaine and heroin addicts destroy their cravings within 72 hours on the Gerson therapy. And I thought, okay, that feels like a scientific hypothesis. This podcast was perfectly designed to test. I reckon one of you guys would be quite easy to put that to the test if you want. I to. will get addicted to heroin. That's it. <laughs> There's also this moment where they're like doing some ominous pill crushing because they're trying to do drug addiction, but it's obviously a fucking Flintstone <laughs> vitamin that they're crushing. It's, it's a Flintstone vitamin and like a Mike and Ike and they're yeah. <laughs> moving it around with like a giant drug sword that, you yeah, know, all like of a hunting us knife. <laughs> it's got a slit down the side. They're using a hunting knife to like crush yes. their vitamins here. Yeah. Yes, it's got like a blood tunnel in it and shit. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, man? You're going to crack open that Mike and Ike like a garlic clove with the side <laughs> of your sword? All right. <laughs> but yeah, he, but he tells us the about the latent power of the human mind. And I'm like, oh, are you going to tell us how to use the other 90%? We don't quite get there, but man, holy shit, do we get close. Yeah, he, he says the human brain is capable of storing information and recalling it at any second, like books in the library. And I thought... Who does he think he's saying this for? Who does he think needs to know this? Like needs to, needs to be told that the human brain is capable of storing information. Well, the target audience of this piece of shit movie, maybe because apparently they, they have a visual aid for this moment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of people in their test audience were like, what the fuck is a book? And then they yeah. show us books for a while. Yes. Yeah, the movie walks around the library like it's a first-person shooter. At one point, I was shouting, turn back, you missed a power-up. If you, if you <laughs> pull on that book, there's a power-up behind it. <laughs> so, yeah. 
it, it explains that the body is miraculous in its design. And while it's saying that, we see like a naked dude doing yoga. And I'm like, well, his body is miraculous in design, I guess. <laughs> not all of them. I've seen the other kind, too. Oh, and this is where we get the anti-fluoride moment in the movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, it, sa- it says about the big fluoride. They want to try and get rid of fluoride. Big fluoride did. So they persuaded the government to allow them to dispose of fluoride by adding it to the drinking water. And it goes on to say, there are other semi-hidden dangers of ingesting deadly poisons. It's like semi-hidden. Is, is one of those dangers death? Because it feels like that's the main danger <laughs> yeah, right, to really. worry about of a deadly poison. Also, this it's so fucking stupid. They're like, well, you know, fluoride is really hard to get rid of. It's this, it's this toxic chemical. It's a byproduct of creating aluminum. It's really hard to get rid of. And I'm like, if the end result is we're just going to drink it, then it's not hard to get rid of. You can just throw it away. <laughs> right? Like, what else are you worried is going to happen if we're going to drink it any fucking way? But yeah, but then they also explain that tooth fillings are dangerous. This is where I was like, oh, are we just doing like a gam best of episode? now? Yeah, it's a retrospective. Absolutely. <laughs> Play the hits, Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But apparently dental fillings give you seizures and mental problems. They say at this point, you know, like selling drugs to kids is bad if they're crack and cocaine, but it's just as bad as if it's Ritalin. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so you're saying that give more kids need crack. <laughs> right? But also it says if you give your kid Ritalin, they could, like the army won't take kids who've ever had Ritalin. So they're saying, yeah, give your kid Ritalin and they may never get enlisted in the military. Cool. And this is somehow an argument against Ritalin. <laughs> yeah, right. right. That's a pro-Ritalin argument. Really dodged a bullet there by taking Ritalin, literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah, right. So, yeah, and by yeah. the way, that's not true. Um, it, it's no. I think in the last two years, if you've been treated for ADHD, the military won't take you. I think that's correct. It's also a bad fucking policy, but it's exaggerate it's wildly misleading it's untrue and it's referring to a bad policy <laughs> so yes. yes also we get a quote from the famous philosopher plato here to just mm-hmm. put a little exclamation point on their segment the quote is no attempt should be made to cure the body without curing the soul and i was like okay yeah plato said that but plato also wanted to ban all music in a minor key so like maybe he's not <laughs> right. the guy for maybe everything. Modern medicine maybe would be a, a field he doesn't know too much about, like music. <laughs> but then the narrator also explains that sleeping is good. That's a must. Got to do that. And we're all like, yeah, did you have like, you had to like say at least two true things before it was over or some <laughs> yeah. kind of a deal? You guys are prescribing sleeping? That's in your prescription for medicine? Okay. Relax. Yeah, he's, he's describing what's, and explaining what sleep is and what it does. Who does he think is watching this who doesn't know what sleep is or what it does? <laughs> it's, yeah, right. You need a weighted blanket of one ton of pressure <laughs> or else the sleeping doesn't work. And then so we, we learned that the kids these days are, are getting a lot of the toxins and they're little, so the toxins are bigger, like proportionally for them. And is this, is this why they say the line, the developing brain of a child at this point in human history must clear a number of hurdles in a bid for genetic normalcy? Yeah. Which like is a weird line, but also don't talk about genetic normalcy in your documentary that opened with my guy was a victim of the Nazis who really uh-huh. loved his medicine. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Don't, let's not go into genetic normalcy. Right. But yeah, but they start talking about kids eating paint chips from, from lead paint and, and how that fucks kids up. And it's like, well, you know, the, but there's a way to get those heavy, heavy metals out of kids. And I'm like, oh, my God, are we doing chelation therapy now? But yeah, the hits yeah. just keep on coming. Yeah. yeah. It's another one of those moments where they're just like, also, fucking lead is bad. We did we did fluoride, right? Check, check, check. Okay, lead, <laughs> lead's awesome. They're just naming things that float at this point. Just being like, very <laughs> Lead, fluoride. Yeah, right. Witches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, but then they explain to us that even the body itself can be toxic in case we weren't scared of everything around us quite enough. This is where we learn that adrenaline is toxic. Right, but they they demonstrate that by like it's by showing you in a stressful situation, like and the the stressful situation they show is the crashing of a plane. It's like oh god, it's a pain when your body produces substance so unhealthy that it really fucks up the otherwise healthy experience of crashing in a bike <laughs> and being chased by a polar bear. Yes. What the okay? So so what happened here is they met this guy who's a filmmaker that that said, hey, you can use some of my awesome footage in your movie if you interview me about your therapy. 
right? So now all of a sudden we've got plane crashes and people being chased by polar bears and shit. Yeah, it's Steve the stunt guy and all of his footage is like an extreme version of America's home videos. <laughs> right, yeah. He's fucking a lady inside an iceberg submarine at one point. It was like a fun, yeah. little, <laughs> fun little segment. Yeah, exactly. So, so we see all of that and they explain that this guy like films polar bears and avalanches for a living. And then we started interviewing him about Gerson therapy, but he's petting a lynx the whole time. He wanted to one up the dog lady. Oh God. Yeah. And it is a great lynx. Like what an excellent <laughs> lynx. It's got massive paws. It's incredibly cute. It's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Best character in the movie. Cause the lynx almost attacks him like three <laughs> times. It was a big tease that it didn't go full out attack, but this lynx fucking hates this guy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. Look, Cats are not like fucking dogs. That dog was just like, oh, you're petting me. I'm in the movie now, I guess. That lynx was like, I, who, where's my fucking agent? Give me, get me to my yeah. fucking agent. <laughs> he doesn't want cuddles. Also, for, <laughs> this guy, for some reason, refused to let the camera crew inside of his snow fort during the very intense <laughs> snowball fight that he thought he was happening with the world. So he's all the way back away from the camera behind a wall of snow. And you just see like part of his body in the top of the links. It's so strange. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's great. He, he just gives us a, a short, a short lecture on lynxes, says Gerson therapy is good and then leaves. It's like, okay, Steve out. Well, and he didn't even have any cancer or anything. He's no, just, they're like, he's, he they're like well, you know, he's using it to prevent tiger attacks. And so far, I mean, lynxes have fucked him up, but the tigers, is, he's doing great. <laughs> so, but no, he's immune to colds and headaches and all of that shit. And then we learn about, speaking of cats, the cat experiment, right? They're like, hey, you know, there was a cat experiment. Don't worry. It was very humane. All the cats live. <laughs> so, and I don't want to present this as though this is a thing that even fucking happened. But the experiment they told us about, a bunch of cats were given cooked meats and a bunch of cats were given raw meats. And the cooked meat cats were fucking all fucked up and stupid and shitty. The raw meat cats were rocking. And this, this probably did, you know, the experiment would have happened. I don't trust the results. But like, this is the whole raw pet feeding thing. And it's such bullshit. It is so bad for cats. It's even worse for dogs because often with dogs, they leave like chunks of bone in with the raw food. And oh, so that God. can get like lodged in the throat. What and the fuck? Just don't ever feed your animals on a raw diet. It's incredibly bad. Incredibly bad. Sure. Also, I feel like humans are different than cats and dogs. No? Mm. And then I, yeah. I said that to myself and the movie right away was like, humans are different. Are different. I'm not sure why we had that segment just now. Well, so, so, but when they bring that up, the point that they're trying to make is that we shouldn't eat meat at all, right? Yes. They're like, a human, the human digestive tract is not designed to eat meat. And I'm like, okay, Eli snuck this part in himself or something, right? That's why there's <laughs> yes. all this weird ADR and shit in it. Well, they, they've got one more line on the on the cats and dogs. So you see, carnivores such as these were designed to hunt and kill. It's like, okay, one, they weren't designed. They were yeah. not designed <laughs> for anything. But also, two, that's very different Like to, to my cat Mildred, because Mildred was only designed to hunt mashed potato that I'm currently in the middle of eating <laughs> and is on my plate, that she can sort of like scooch her hand underneath, scooch her paw underneath my hand and like grab a fist full of mashed right, potatoes. Yes. That's the only thing she's ever hunted. <laughs> She sounds delightful. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, but we learned that when you eat meat, it putrefies in your guts and kills you with toxins. And I'm like, well, yeah, but come on, everything kills you with toxins. <laughs> <laughs> but they say that the meat lives in your colon for days, months, or even years. It's like, no, it doesn't. Why would it take years for meat to rot, like putrefy and rot away? If you just left meat on like the side of the road and watched right. it, it wouldn't take years to disappear. Right. Why would that be different years. in your guts? <laughs> yeah. Like... They don't just they don't just hang around the di digestive tract. They digest in there. There's acids and stuff going on. Like watch an inner space or something. Learn about the, <laughs> the acids in the stomach. Fuck yeah. So then we, we learn that eating meat will just fuck your pancreas sideways, right? The thing is, is that the the pancreas has a really important job, but meat will show up and start like trying to talk to it about movies and TV shows <laughs> yeah. that it saw and shit. <laughs> it's all distracted. Yeah, they set it up as the pancreas gets distracted by meat and can't do its other good thing. And I was like, okay, maybe, I don't know, shoot some Ritalin in there with a fire hose right into the pancreas? <laughs> Get it going, paying attention. There you go. And this is where they say, if we eliminated animal products from our diets, the chance of getting cancer, diabetes, or heart disease would almost vanish. 
And it's like, yeah, like if only there were decades of data around people who don't eat meat on a regular basis on which we could draw one to see if that was right. true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, a fuckload of research has been done on that. And vegans have at most a 14% lower chance of cancer. So wow. if something is lowered by like one in seven, that hasn't disappeared. It's still six in seven at that point. Yeah, exactly. They also, they show us a hot dog with American cheese on it. And I'm just like, way to make unhealthy food look gross though, right? Like it's, that's generally a bit of a challenge, but that looked pretty fucking awful. Yeah. Also, they clearly boiled that hot dog in the same pot from the ass coffee for sure. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> the same one. I was like, come on guys, get, just get another pot. Get a dedicated pot. I know it's not coming back from the ass, but still have a dedicated pot. <laughs> Shit or get off the pot. <laughs> <laughs> But then Charlotte shows back up to tell us that she can also prevent osteoporosis. Apparently, osteoporosis is caused by drinking milk. Oh, this is so stupid. Yeah. That, that's why we don't have the crappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so eating meat and drinking milk fucks up your bones. There's this long, and if you've been around woo people, you've probably heard this argument about how calcium, it can't get the calcium out of the milk, so it starts taking it out of your bones instead. This is just fucking nonsense. Right? And by the way, the music in the background of this whole part, it sounds like Conan the Barbarian is coming for your bone health. Right? Because <laughs> they're trying to make it sound all ominous and scary. Yeah. They also claim that milk won't give you any calcium because Almost all of it's pasteurized and homogenized now or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they did a quick little raw milk nod to get, you know, the check on their list. And immediately I was like, okay, it's about to be alkaline water next. And then the Fed is a Ponzi scheme next. That's definitely <laughs> what's about to happen. <laughs> you had a few had a 50-50 shot that we were gonna get to the Fed there. Yeah. But green juices, that's where the real calcium's at. Then Charlotte explains that she canceled her health insurance when she was 34 years old, and presumably we can too. Right, yeah, because you need to divert all of your income to the green grocer bills for how many fucking carrots you're buying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Shit. I feel like she was mad the prescription coverage part didn't include 18 wheeler of carrots every week. <laughs> yeah. She was like, this doesn't make any sense because that's all I need it to cover. Yeah, but she explains that it, she didn't get rid of her health insurance because she was so healthy. It's because she was so stupid. Right. She's yes. like, you know, they were going to give us, give me toxic drugs and chemicals. And I'm just like, e everything is chemicals. God damn it. <laughs> right. Your carrots have chemicals in them. The fuck are you talking about? But she assures us that she's never been ill or, or felt bad at any point for any amount of time. And the movie demonstrates, you know, how we too could be living our life to the fullest by showing us her pruning bushes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, she also says I saved like $90,000 over 45 years because I didn't have health insurance and I didn't need it. That's not how that works. Like carrots and ass coffee don't prevent fucking car accidents. You just happen to not get into a car yes. accident. Yes, right, yeah, absolutely. right, exactly. And then she explains that she's never had a mammogram and therefore she's never had breast cancer, mm -hmm. right? Can't, can't have cancer if they don't tell you about it. And the thing is, like, she lived to 90. So if you want any proof that there is no God, Charlotte Gerson lived to 90 and never experienced a particularly damaging <laughs> disease. That is proof there's no God. Yeah, no kidding. But we learn, of course, that big cancer is trying to keep Charlotte down. They, the, the movie is surprisingly sparse on the accusations of why it is that we don't just all know about this cure that's been around for nearly a hundred years. Right. Mm. But they just kind of occasionally will nod to, but you know, they never want you to know about these kind of things. Right. They're like, you know, you know, it's, it's literally illegal for American doctors to even recommend the Gerson therapy. Why would that be if it didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, what yeah. did you mean? <laughs> did, did, so, yeah, but so after explaining us to, to us that the Gerson therapy is unequivocally, quote, unequivocally the holy grail of curing cancer. Yes. It's the bamboo rayon of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Gerson therapy is the holy grail in that it's not real, but many people have died believing in it. So it really yeah. is <laughs> the holy grail. So, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But we meet Charlotte's son, who writes for some very prestigious newsletters that they publish. <laughs> Her daughter also helps promote their bullshit from a different country. 
So there's a guy called Giuliano who wrote a fictional story about Max Gerson. Don't know how related he is, but we find out that he's written a, a novel about Max Gerson. So, yeah, uh-huh. you know. Okay, I believe the Gerson family is parasitic and immortal. I'll believe that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, there's a weird, like, her granddaughter is so good at having coffee squirted up her ass she can play violin kind of a moment in there at one point. Yeah, but she plays violin at Gerson events by the sounds of things. Like, she plays violin at Gerson conferences. So, like, yeah. I don't know how good she actually is. I mean, that violin's getting drowned out by shit noise the whole time. So, like, we don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> or just the noise of the press. for the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. We can't hear the violin. <laughs> just the juicer going. <laughs> So, but now it's time to talk about the deadliest cancer of all. And no, we're not talking about Gerson therapy here. We're talking about, I guess, pancreatic cancer. Yes. So this is where we meet Pat from Canada. She's from Canada. You don't know her. (laughs) But she cured her cancer with butt coffee. We meet her, by the way, she's playing with this little coin bank where you set the coin down and the hand reaches up and grabs it. Mm. And we watch her play with that for like, a minute and a half. Really long segment. Yeah. I was really excited. I had that exact same money box when I was 11. So I was like, oh, oh my God, I had that. It's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that where you put the coins when you were also being a uh, postal worker as an aspirational thing that you always wanted to do? Yes. You had a little yeah. the, the <laughs> counter and the, the yeah. little window, mm-hmm. the slidey window. <laughs> It was a great toy. The post office was a great toy. I don't know why America so didn't have it. <laughs> so <laughs> fun toy. You get to stamp things. Boom, boom. Stamp. No, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. <laughs> you could do passports. Give people little passports. Stamp a passport. <laughs> boom, boom. There you go. Driver's license. Pet license. Brilliant. Driver's license. <laughs> post office. It's fucking nuts. But yeah, but apparently Pat had pancreatic cancer. But she was cured by ass coffee. Those stupid doctors told her she only had three months to live. That was nine years ago. But she explains to us that, you know, she she was doing all of the stuff that the doctors told her, and that just made her puke blood. But then 10 days into her juice and ass coffee diet, her cancer was completely cured. Right. She didn't have a dog to pet, so they, she should they have her with her bird. I guess. Yes. The bird was pretty good. The bird was (laughs) pretty good. Yeah, the bird was great. The bird was actively refusing to look at her because she keeps trying (laughs) to like be like, oh, little bird, 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 bird. And the bird keeps like craning around sideways further and further just to not look at her. I'm not talking to you. It's the best. And there's a point where she said, the doctor said to me, we don't want to know what you're doing. Just keep doing it. It's like, there is no way your doctor said, well, you appear to be completely cancer free. We don't want to know why. We have no interest in knowing how you magically cured cancer. That is not interesting to us. We also learned that the dude from Little House on the Prairie, the guy who died from prostate cancer or whatever cancer he had, pancreatic cancer, I guess, he called her at one point. He called Pat from Canada to talk fucking pancreatic cancer with her. Yeah. But it's a story that, like, he died of cancer, therefore Gerson works because he wasn't taking Gerson therapy. Is that the best that we're going to get here? Yes. I think so, yeah. yeah. Well, she claims that he called her and said, ah, oh, if only I had tried the ass coffee and then died right away, right? <laughs> that was his assessment. Oh, you know what it might have been? Little House on the Prairie guy, not Hungarian ancestry. So, oh yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> could have had a lot to do. Re- I don't know why, right? Because we learned that about Pat. Yeah, they're like Pat. Why? Why do we find that out? Is Hungarian? End of thought. I was like, that's fucking weird, guys. What are you doing? Why do we even have Pat's story at all at this point? Because we've already like, we feel like we we just we heard what happened to all of the Gerson family. We basically they gave us a Breakfast Club close, and they went, <laughs> oh, uh, another thing. We filmed this thing with Pat and her bird. We gotta we gotta use that. Apparently, she has to be in this as well. I don't know why they put it here. Did they think we were one anecdote away, or or that we were going like, what we need is a Hungarian anecdote? Hungarians <laughs> never lie, right? Yeah. What the fuck was that? Oh, and they show us the uh, the bullshit hospital that got put up in... The Hungarian one, yeah. In, in yeah. Hungary. Oh, maybe that's that was their segue to show the fake hospital in Hungary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's their lazy ass. Like, she's of Hungarian ancestry, so she was especially excited about the Gerson Hospital opening up in Hungary. Or like, was she really, though? Inside of a castle? Yeah, opening up where her, her great-grandfather came from. So, like, you know, four, four <laughs> generations back, there was some Hungarian in there. Here's a castle. Right, what yeah. the fuck? They were very excited that their fake hospital was inside of a castle. And I was like, that's not good for a hospital. Just nothing about castles makes me feel medically safe. Mm. I don't think that's a good idea. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, generally speaking, hospitals don't go into really old buildings. Yeah. You can get your pills from a falcon. Like, no, I don't want that. What are you talking about? And it's very unlikely that cancer is going to try and like siege you out that you want to like, right, you don't yeah, need exactly. a moat to protect you from the cancer. <laughs> well, yeah, the stairs are set up so that the cancer would have to be right handed against the wall. So. <laughs> and so, so then we get we get this pompous ass wrap up about I don't know what the fuck that like the narrator was told he was going to get six minutes to just say what was on his mind. Damn it. Right. Because this is where he starts talking about how. First of all, he claims that the fall of Rome was from drinking water from leaded pipes. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I was so annoyed by all of this. We just start seeing visuals. His message is basically, life is shit and terrible, but sometimes it isn't. All right, great summary. But then I just wrote, these mountains I'm seeing have nothing to do with Gerson therapy. That helicopter has nothing to do with Gerson therapy. <laughs> this ice has nothing to do with Gerson therapy. This lion and this mountain has, uh, this lion and this mammoth have nothing to do with Gerson therapy. None of that was relevant. There was a mammoth. What the fuck was a mammoth doing there? I don't know. The movie's just vamping now to get to 90 minutes, I think. Yep. And then, then the movie has a breakdown. Like the VO guy's like, <laughs> So that mammoth was nice, but we're all going to die and nothing. Everyone is going to die and nothing means anything. He says like at one point, he's like, with every meal, we're digging our own graves with our silverware. And I'm like, and I wrote my notes. This is so hilariously grandiose. After he said that, as I'm writing that, he says these exact fucking words. The pivotal moment for human civilization is here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) In this documentary. (laughs) And it's like he was negging us about our entire lives. Like, you are meaningless and worthless and nothing about you is relevant. So, you know, drink some carrot juice is basically the message here. Yeah. God, I'm just backing away. I'm like trying to introduce him to the wine guy who's talking about a <laughs> shitty vineyard. How about you two? Talk to each other. <laughs> He's like, what will ultimately matter when you die? And I'm like, do you think the answer is whether you did Ash coffee? What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I mean, in the case of Max and Charlotte Gerson, what will matter is that they've been responsible for the painful deaths of thousands of people yeah, yeah. and will continue to be responsible for deaths long after they themselves have died. So yeah, that is what is going to be the lasting legacy of the Gerson family. Yeah. yeah. I looked up Gerson therapy for just a second here because I got bored with the movie having a weird breakdown VO. <laughs> and mm-hmm. the like really fast, it was like, causes rectal bleeding. And I was like, Jesus, that was like so <laughs> quick. And Eli might secretly be doing Gerson therapy based on everything <laughs> we've talked about today. Really? Honestly, that would explain a fucking lot, wouldn't it? So yeah, so he gives us that his fucking weird ennui for five minutes to close this thing. Then it zooms in on a picture of Max Gerson. And then we think we're out of it, but no, we have more of those title card candles from the beginning. And... I just thought this was going to be a quick like, and then everybody lived happily ever after kind of wrap up. But no, this is a conspiracy theory (laughs) that Max Gerson was murdered by big cancer to explain away why the guy who figured out the key to immortality eventually got sick and died. Yes, like it it literally basically says after publishing his How to Avoid All Ill Health by Ignoring Medicine Completely book, Gerson fell inexplicably ill. I feel like I can explicate it. (laughs) I feel that is explicable. And then they actually say his manuscript was stolen by a, quote, rogue physician, end quote, Oh, and he yeah, had to- by his, his secretary. His secretary like palmed it off to a rogue physician. Yes. I, I feel like we could do, do without his office drama bullshit about him sacking his secretary. <laughs> that's my new character for D&D Minus is that rogue physician. Fuck sure. yeah, that's, got, that's trying to hide Max Gerson's uh, secret cure. All right, well, Marsh, thank you so much for lending us your expertise on this one. And hey, I hear a rumor that dates are set for QED this year. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be the uh, 19th and 20th of October at the McKeel Piccadilly Hotel in Manchester. We're going to have the 18th of October is also going to be the free Skeptic Camp Day. So stick that weekend in your diaries. And uh, I think we'll put the tickets out. It's going to be a couple of months before we uh, fully, a couple of weeks before we announce all the details about the tickets. But um, it's all it's all moving pretty quickly. Definitely happening October 18th to 20th. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, we'll keep you updated, listener, once there's more information on that. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of the Gerson Miracle, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to bang our heads against the same wall next week. So, Heath, tell us what's on deck. We've got 
church people. It's about people in church. It's a so-called comedy. <sighs> That's all I'm going to say about it. But it's produced by Mike motherfucking Lindell. So that Ooh, is what we're going to be looking forward to as nice. we bring episode 449 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, DMD Minus, and The Skeptic Guide, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotny of Little on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusionist promise to work harder and earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The Gerson family continued being shills for the juice conspiracy known as Big Apple. Charlotte Gerson and her son Howard both died in 2019. That's not a joke. It's just nice to end on some good news sometimes. <laughs> nice. The squirmy, out-of-focus person in the background of the coffee enema scene eventually did get to take that shit. <laughs> <laughs>Show a man writhing around in the background of your movie about how this is medicine. All I can think is they're all writhing at all times, and that's the best. That's why it was out of shot, of like, uh, uh, focus. It's like, okay, we, we can't show the writhing. We uh, can't show the writhing. They're never going to stick it up their ass if they see the writhing. <laughs> yeah. It's the higher vibrations. You just got to take the writhing. Yeah, that's, it? Uh, that's why they vibrate <laughs> so much. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.